With fall just around the corner, Dave dumps his boat into a lake blooming with algae in search of some giant buckets. Bass fishing again, eh, Dave? What else is new? Look at that dude! Smoke that spinnerbait! Whew. In a land like no other, on a lake like you've never seen, well, maybe you've seen lakes like this. But there is an angler so great, he once set the hook so hard he turned a small mouth into a large mouth. He can unscramble an egg. He made his first cast at the age of three, and it landed yesterday. We join him to chronicle one day on one lake. This is Facts of Fishing, the show. Here we go. Welcome to Facts of Fishing, the show. Brought to you by Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Your adventure starts here. Abu Garcia for life. Yamaha, conquer water. Live target, lifelike lures. Action car and truck accessories, the right customer experience. Berkeley, catch more fish. And Phoenix Bass Boats, experience the Phoenix difference. Fish. Smoked it. That's not the one we're looking for. Gator squanch. this doesn't feel like a gator it is a gator we found the gator farm come on in free rides for all the children here at the gator farm they ain't big gators but they sure are nasty <sighs> we want bass need no stinking gators. And that one felt like a bass too. This segment is brought to you by Abu Garcia for life.
not getting it. Well, dude, gone. It's okay. Little guys can get off. He demopulated my spinner bait. Small job will do that. They get angry at spinner baits. You stayed on, didn't you, Junior? Junior always stays on. Even that one, just on the stinger hook, though. Those things usually smoke it. but he's wrapped around. Oh, there he's off, he's off. There he is, he's a giant. Smoked it. Oh man, look at the size of this fish. Had me wrapped around rocks, so I have no idea what condition my line's in. Oh, look at that dude. Smoked that spinner bait. Whew. Feel my line, I can't believe it's okay. But this fish actually hit behind a rock and had me jammed uh, under that rock. You can feel my line just rubbing against it, so I'll have to check that line out. But thankfully, she's in the boat. Man, that fish was insane. I could feel my line rubbing against, uh, you know, one of the veins in the rocks. It's, you know, similar to like when your line's wrapped around a piling on a, on a dock. There's little cracks in these rocks and those fish will bury your line on it. But one of the tricks that I gotta show you, cause it's a big mistake that I used to make for years. I always tell you to check your line, you know, run your fingers down and feel it, you know, makes sense. But that's what most people do. That fish, it was rubbing against something, but it was like 30, 40 feet from the boat. So what I'll do on my next few casts is I'll always just hold that line, let it run through my fingers. Why? Well, right now, less than trying to catch a fish, I'm actually trying to make sure my line's in good condition. If there's any nicks or dings in that line, I'm gonna feel them, and I know it can strip, I might have to strip off 30, 40 feet to get to it but at least I know it's there, because trust me, the absolute worst way to discover it is when you're hooked up with a fish. I mean, and trust me, I didn't learn these things because I'm extra smart. I, I'm actually the opposite, and I learned them through trial and error. But just little tiny things like that, you know, making sure your equipment's in good condition. Trust me, enough things are gonna go wrong that you can't control. So you might as well try control everything that you can. And making sure your line's in good condition is key. Crazy thing is about that one, I mean, it was rubbing me up against the rocks. I don't feel anything on this line. The rods in today's episode were threaded using the RTD rod threading device.
this. Another good bucket. Another good bucket on the blade. I mean, that's not a giant. But dude, that is a fun way to spend a day right there. I mean, I don't know why I said that. I mean, that's just one of those things that, that fish and show hosts say. Not a giant one, but check out the colors. Not a big one, but hey, scrappy. Not impressive whatsoever, but fun for the kids. Fish I catch aren't impressive, but they sure are cute. Not much of a scrapper, but check out the vermiculations. Just say that word to yourself, vermiculation. It's like judicial system. Makes you sound drunk when you say it. The vermiculite. Vermiculations. Judicial system. I'm sorry, officer. I didn't want to upset the judicial system. There he is. Catch up to him. I fish surfaced right in front of us. And look at how crazy this algae bloom is. Watch, watch when he swims up. I mean, look at my rod tip. But this fish just always goes to show you whenever you see a fish surface, I don't care what you're fishing for, always cast to it. I mean, if a fish surfaces, you know a fish was there. And if you know a fish was there, then, I mean, you spend a lot of time fishing in spots that you had no, don't know there's a fish there, so. Whenever you know where a fish is, always, always, always cast to it. One of the things I love about a spinner bait is kind of the constant contact. You know, if you have the right setup, you're going to be able to feel every thump of that blade. Oh, I just missed a fish. Man. It's all about that contact and feeling that blade and what contact also allows you to do, not just catch fish, but you'll see me popping my rod every once in a while. And what I'm doing there is I'm not setting the hook, I'm popping that bait through patches of weed. I mean, basically this lake is at that stage when the weed hasn't quite started to totally break down, but it's starting. So you got a lot of particulate in the water and a lot of things uh, floating around and uh, you're gonna get a lot of stuff on your baits. And that's when one of the reasons the spinner bait is so effective here today, just simply because I can feel that bait the whole way back to the boat. I know that blade's thumping, it's thumping, it's thumping. And then once I get in a pile of weeds, like all of a sudden your rod will just load up a little bit. And when you feel that, give it a quick pop. That'll pull your bait out of the weeds. And also, it's one of the best triggering effects. I can't count the number of fish I've caught over the years. That I just was reeling along, got buried in a pile of weeds. You could imagine a fish just sitting down there in those weeds. I popped it and poof, it smoked it. Small jaw this time around. Green dust bin on bait. You ain't that big. That little dude creamed that spinner bait. But he is just that. A little dude. This segment is brought to you by Hook Performance Fishing.
one little trick that I'll always do when throwing a blade is just pulse it. You'll see I'll turn that reel and then boom, just a couple of quick turns. And basically, you know, you hear me talk about it a lot. It's triggering effect. I mean, that fish is following that bait. It's following along behind it. And there's no real reason to eat it unless it's going to get away. And that quick turn of the handle and it's just basically feathering or whatever you want to call it really feathering i think feathering sounds good you i mean i'm all in for feathering you just kind of feather it real quick you spin it just a couple of quick turns and who doesn't want to feather the real come on no pulse pulse is a much better word let's go with pulse don't feather your reel. Your buddies will make fun of you. Pulse it, just give it a thump, and that bait will pulse. There's a fish. Easy. He's big as I thought he was, but he's a good one. You can jump, aren't you? Look at that one right there. That's a little chunk. I thought he was a lot bigger when I hooked him, but that is a good fish right there. Solid, solid chunk. But surely it looks like we're putting something together. I mean, when they want it, they want it. Crazy. I mean, that thing dusted it. Seven and a half foot rod, in my opinion, is just ideal. Number one, it allows me to have really long casts so I can cover a ton of water, but it also gives me leverage. You've seen a few times, you know, a fish, I don't know how they do it, but for whatever reason, fish, they always know when you're out of position. Think about it. Think about the last time you caught a fish. Was it when you were like focused and ready? Most times it's when you're scratching your butt or scratching your ear or doing something, you're out of position. The longer your rod, the more leverage you're gonna have and it's gonna allow you to catch up on that fish. All right, fish, right on, I popped it off the weed and that fish smoked it. Oh, it's not the right type, but a gator squanch. If you recall, we talked about this earlier. I mean, it's amazing the amount of strikes. Let me get Mr. Gator Squanch up in here. Have a look at that little sexy cutie. Get out of here. But it really is amazing the amount of strikes you get by popping your bait. You know, you feel a piece of weed on there or something, you just pop that bait. It's, it's kind of a triggering effect that'll make those fish bite. And sometimes they will mess up your spinner bait. If you got a spinner bait and it's all deranged and dismangled, all you gotta do is tune it up. And the key is to make sure that those two wires are in line. If that's off, your bait's not gonna run right. And a little trick I'll do is I'll always kinda twist it out like that a bit. Why? Well, it just gives it a little bit more thump. The more those arms are pushed out, there's more thump on that bait and it's gonna allow me to feel that bait. And like I tell you all the time, the more feel you have with a bait, the better angler you're gonna be. You just cover water just so much more effectively. And I just want to know at the end of the day, I mean, if I'm making a hundred casts, I want, if they're a hundred, hundred foot long casts, I want a hundred feet of them to be effective, not 50 feet. So if you feel that bait get interrupted, 
Don't be afraid to pop it. Cause they might just come along and munchie. Dave fished for eight hours, made 411 casts, and caught 12 fish. That's it for the score. Now time for the facts. Dave caught all his fish on either a white or green spinnerbait. Fished on a seven and a half foot, medium heavy action Abu Garcia Veritas casting rod with an Abu Garcia Revo SX bait caster. Spooled up with 10 pound test, Berkeley 100% fluorocarbon. And that's the facts.